Hi guys. Um, today I'm doing a video just on my own to give you more practice of 4.4. So um, you are welcome to watch this. You're welcome to ignore it. Um, up to you. I just know that we have only had so much time to practice this in class. So I want to give you some more examples. So I'm just going to fill in the sheet on our actual note packet. Remember, we did like a front and back side separately um, for these types of problems in class. So make sure that you have that and have watched those previous 4.4 videos. I'll call this one extra something so that you know that this is not a real lesson that you missed in class. So again, just gonna go through and I'm just gonna review as much of this as I can. Um, so we're gonna start with the basic sine and cosine. We've done this several times. Remember that the amplitude for sine is always one unless there's a transformation. The period for sine is always two pi. Remember our unit circle, you have to go all the way around one time in order to get all the way done, that's two pi. Um, sine always starts and ends at the like middle of my graph and its middle point is also in the middle too. It starts by going up and then it's um, last part is going down. So it goes all the way up to positive one. It goes all the way down to negative one. And I kind of treat these as like equal parts. So like I know that I'm at zero pi and two pi. So I think beginning, middle, beginning, middle and end are my middle points. And then like the middle of the first and the middle point is my one, the middle of my middle and my last point is negative one. So I go up and I go down and I come back. Very cool. All right, that's sign. Again, we've done that several times. If you do not know the general shape of sign, you need to learn that. Similar with cosine, amplitude is one, period is two pi. However, in this case, my cosine starts and ends at the top. It starts and ends at the top and its middle point is my lowest point. The middle point between the first and the middle is in, um, is like on the axis and then same thing between the middle and the last point. It goes all the way up to positive one, goes all the way down to negative one and then it makes this nice little curve. That's as good as that's gonna look today. Okay, again, those are general shapes. We have that on another sheet, but I wanted to remind us here. Okay, the first couple of problems I'm gonna do are just um, amplitude and period changes. So C, D, and E are pretty simple. So I'm gonna fly through those where I think it gets tougher is when we have like a horizontal and or a vertical shift. All of these are horizontal shifts and um, period and amplitude changes. So those should be pretty simple. On the next page, we get all of those. So those will be the fun ones. So. Um, whenever you have a number out front, that's just an amplitude change. So that means my amplitude is not one, now it's two. My period hasn't changed. There's no number in front of X. So I'm gonna keep my period at two pi. Now, when I give you a graph like this that doesn't have any marks, you can put your marks wherever. I can put two pi here if it makes me happy, or I can put it at the end. I like to extend it out as far as I can just so I get a nice curve, but you can do whatever you want. It goes up to I'm just putting all my little marks there. There's my like middle mark. There's my second middle mark. And then it goes not up to one. It goes all the way up to two, not down to negative one, down to negative two. If you remember um, in our notes the other day, I did like a little box. So that means it goes as high as positive two and as low as negative two. And it doesn't go any farther than two pi and zero. So that's just a nice little box for me to keep everything organized and everything caught up in. It's a sine function. So you gotta make sure you're graphing the right trig function in the middle for the first middle and last, and then it goes high and then it goes low. So the only difference from this to the first one is it should just be a little bit taller. Okay, any questions? Pause and let me know. Next one, I'm going to cosine. This one is three is my amplitude. Ooh, but I've got a negative, which means that it's flipped. It's flipped vertically. So instead of starting and ending high, it's gonna start and end low and its high point is gonna be the middle. So I'm gonna write that over to the side by writing A amplitude is three. I don't write negative three because I think of amplitude as a distance and I don't want a negative distance, but I will write flip so that I know that I have to flip it. And then the period we did, there's nothing in front of X. So there's no change in my period. It's just a normal two pi. Again, you can put two pi here if it makes you happy. I like to stretch mine out. 
this seems fine for me, two pi. That's about pi. Those are the two in the middle. And then it goes to three, one, two, three, one, two, three. If I give you a graph with points, follow that. If I don't give you a graph with points, we can make our own points wherever we want. Um, I thought it was easier to learn on a graph that was given, which is why that's what we did in class the past couple of days, but you are fully capable of doing it here. Again, you can make your little pitter patter box if you want. If you hate that, don't use it. I just wanna equip you with tools. You don't have to use all the tools that I use. Um, again, it's a negative cosine, which means that I start down low, I end down low, my middle is the highest, and then in between I hit my like zero mark. So zoom. Ah, that's good enough. So now your cosine graph, good enough. All right, one more of our easy ones. Again, if you need to, you can always stop and go back and review these. All right, this time I do have not just an amplitude change, but I also have a period change because I've got a number in front of the X. Remember, if it's with the X, it changes it horizontally. If it's with the out front of the trig or behind the trig, that changes my Y. So my amplitude is two and my period is not two, it's gonna be two pi divided by two, which is just pi. Yep, we haven't done that yet. Two pi divided by two. So you can make your pi all the way out there. I would say if um, two pi was out here, pi would normally be here. So I'm gonna show it's a little scrunched up. If pi is there, then here's my middle mark. In between zero and pi would be pi over two. And then there are points in between that. Those would be pi over fours, just because I know of how I'm splitting it up. This is a huge, work on fractions. So if you have trouble with fractions, we got to talk. Pi over four, three pi over four. Now, this doesn't mean as soon as I see pi over fours, I need to go to my unit circle. No, it just means that I scrunch my graph up a little bit. You don't even have to label these if you don't want to. And it means that I'm going to go as high as two and as low as negative two, and I can only go out to pi. Little box might feel silly right here when you're like, well, it's not that hard to stay within pi. Give me like two seconds and you'll see why I think the box is helpful. Again, it's still positive sign. So first, middle and last points are at zero and then I go high and then I go low. So this is taller than a normal sign and it's squished in a little bit more than a normal sign. Okay. All right, at this point, you should be able to do all of your normal just amplitude and period changes. And we did more on a separate sheet. So you can check those two for other examples, okay? Now we're gonna add those two things plus a horizontal shift, which means I'm just picking up my graph and I'm moving it over, picking it up, moving it over. Um, I still wanna identify all of the things that we've already said. So we're gonna do amplitude and period. And then I call this the new origin. I call it an NO new origin because that's like my new like kind of center of the graph. So we're gonna look at that in a second. I've got my amplitude is three to keep my colors in order. My, um, the number that affects the period is two. So amplitude is three, period is gonna be two pi divided by two, which is just pi. And then my new origin means I'm shifting it over pi over four units. I'm going, since it says negative, that means I'm going right. So it's gonna be pi over four comma zero is my new like zero, zero point. So we're gonna look at what that looks like in a second. I'm gonna call this pi over four. And in order to see where I end my, where my period ends at pi, I cannot just go to pi and call it a day. I can only do that if I started at zero. But in this case, I'm moving pi over four units to the right. So from pi, I need to move pi over four units to the right. If you think of pi as one whole plus one fourth, that becomes five fourths. So I'm now at five pi over four. 
And you can think of this the whole way. So actually, let me do this. If I did my entire normal pi period, I say this is pi and that's zero. And then that means I've got another point at pi over two and I've got another point um, in between that. So the point in between pi over two and, pi, and zero would be pi over four. And then between pi over two and one pi would be three pi over four. Again, if you're having trouble with fractions, one fourth, one half, three fourths, one whole. And then now we're just shifting everything over a bit. So I'm shifting over here. This is my new like starting point. That means that I have to shift over one more to go my entire distance, five pi over four. And then that means my new middle is three pi over four. My new in between the first and the middle is pi over two. I'm going up to three and so let me find that one, two, three, it's about there. And I'll erase my little fraction work down here. One, two, three. So I don't know if you can see my box anymore, but it's right here. So that means I need to do my normal sine graph in here. Sine is the trig function. So zero, zero, it starts high, it goes low. Let me do some consistency here. I had to shrink its period and I had to stretch its amplitude, stretch it vertically. And then I physically took that box and I just shifted it over pi over four units. We're about to do three more like this and then two more on another page. So I want you to hang on with me, even if you're a little confused. Again, I think what's most confusing is this is just fraction stuff. And so if your fraction foundation is super shaky, then you're gonna struggle with this a little bit. Okay, let's go to the next one. Same idea, let's identify amplitude period and let's identify what our new origin is. So amplitude, period, new origin. My amplitude is always the number out front. And in this case, it's at one fifth. Okay, that just means I'm like really, really shrunk vertically. And I can make my one fifth wherever. You can make it right there where you think one fifth might be. Or I can go up here and say, I'm gonna call that one fifth. It doesn't matter. It's your graph as long as you label it. My period is going to be two pi divided by one half. Okay, we're getting good at dividing by decimals. So dividing by one half is the same thing as two pi times two over one, which is four pi. We did a four pi on our notes the other day. So that just means instead of calling this out here two pi, we're gonna call this four pi and really stretch it out. And then my new origin is affected by this. So it's pi over eight and it's a plus, which means I'm gonna go left pi over eight units. So I'm gonna start at negative pi over eight comma zero. The reason this problem looks so tricky is because of all the fractions. But once I label my amplitude as one fifth wherever I want, and once I realize that my period is four pi, not a decimal, that's helpful. The hardest thing I think right here is this negative pi over eight. So I've got my one fifth, I'm gonna have my negative one fifth down here. In a normal situation, I would just go this, ooh, sorry, my iPad fell while I was trying to write on it. I would go like from one fifth to negative one fifth and I'd go all the way up to pi over four. However, I can't do that. I need to go left pi over eight. So I'm essentially taking this box and going left pi over eight, however far I think that is. Do you see how that shows me that I don't quite go to four pi? I go one eighth less than four pi. That means that I'm starting here at negative pi over eight. I'm going to the left pi over eight, which means that my ending point is gonna be the left pi over eight from four pi. If we wanna label that correctly, which I would love for us to do is again, we gotta go back to fractions. Four pi is the same thing as what over eight? What divided by eight gives me four? That would be 32. So then this is technically 31 pi over eight. 
if we were back in our perfect world without any fractions, if I'm ending at four pi and I started at zero, then my middle would be at two pi. But I can't go to two pi, I need to go to the left pi over eight from two pi. So my middle point isn't gonna be two pi. Um, think of two pi as a decimal, or sorry, as a fraction over eight. What over eight is two? What divided by eight is two? That's 16 pi. So that means my new point is gonna be 15 pi over eight. And then now we have to do the middle points. So if I was the middle point between zero and two pi would be one pi. We're gonna go left pi over eight from that. I'm gonna erase all the ones that I'm not using in a second, just kind of bear with me. If I normally go to one pi, pi by itself is the same thing as eight pi over eight. So if I minus one from that, I'm at seven pi over eight. And then the last one is the middle between two pi and four pi which would be three pi, the middle number between two and four, we get all bent out of shape here, between two and four, the middle of two and four is three. And three pi as a fraction over eight would be 24 pi over eight. And so one eighth less than that would be 23 pi over eight. Okay, I know this looks like a mess, but I'm gonna get rid of what we don't get to use we don't get to go all the way out to four pi. So I'm erasing that. We don't get to physically go to three pi. So I'm erasing that. We don't physically get to go to two pi. So I'm erasing that. And we don't physically get to go to one pi. So I'm erasing that. And we don't physically get to go to zero. So I'm erasing that. This helped me find all my new points because I took all my old points and I just shifted them one eighth over, one eighth over, one eighth over. I'm gonna draw my box again because I think that that's helpful. Box, box, box. And then I got rid of all the marks that I'm not using. So even though I would love to have labeled two pi and four pi, I don't get to use those as graphs. So I'm not gonna label them because I don't want them. This is a cosine graph, which means that I have to follow my cosine model. So that means I'm gonna go back up to the top and remind myself, okay, cosine starts and ends at the top. It's uh, middle is the lowest point, And then the two other ones are on the X axis. Okay, same thing here. So I start, high and high, middle point is the lowest. And then other than that, I hit the axis. We didn't do as tough of fractions and as tough um, shifts as we are doing here the other day because I needed to ease us up. And I thought it was easier to do it with like a pi over two or a pi over four, but you are fully capable of doing it as pi over eights too. Here we got two more, let's keep going. Again, you can always stop and go back to that if you want to. All right, here, negative two sine one third x minus pi over seven. Got another ugly fraction, but we can handle it. My two is my amplitude and the negative makes it flip. A equals two, flip. My um, one third is affecting the period. So my period is two pi divided by one third. Well, that's like two pi times three, which is six pi. Okay, that's not too bad. And then this negative pi over seven means that I'm moving right pi over seven. So that means my new origin is going to be positive pi over seven comma zero. Again, I would argue this is tedious, not hard. It's just annoying that we have to do all the fractions. Let's go do my amplitude and mark my period and then we'll shift everything over from the period. So amplitude is two, one, two, seems fine. One, two, negative two. If we didn't have any left or right shifts, we would go all the way out to six pi. So I'm gonna put six pi about here. However, we don't get to use that. We have to move to the right pi over seven, which means I'm moving this six pi over one pi over seven. So six pi in terms of over seven 
What divided by seven gives me six? 42, 42 pi over seven. So if I add one pi over seven to that, I get to be 43 pi over seven. I should have done my other ones. Let me do those real quick. If I'm going from zero to six pi, the middle of that is going to be three pi. If I'm going from zero to three pi, the middle of that, the middle between zero and three is one half, one and a half, excuse me, which is three pi over two. And then the middle between three pi and six pi is gonna be 4.5 over, or 4.5 pi, which is going to be, it's four and a half. So it's eight, nine pi over two. Three plus 1.5 is 4.5 and that's, four and one half and improper fraction two times four plus one is nine. Yep, I'm convinced, okay. If you need help with fractions, come see me because this is a little tough, but I don't have time in class to go over this. This is like combining middle school and algebra one stuff. And so we don't have time in pre-cal to go back to this. I'm adding one seventh to everything. Um, Adding it to three won't be that hard. So if I have three pi becomes something over seven is 21 pi over seven, that becomes 22 pi over seven. Okay. Now I got to do the fractions, which I don't want to do, but we're going to do them anyway. So if I've got three pi over two equals something pi over seven, we can just set up a little proportion and solve that. I'm sure I could reason my way through it, but I'd rather do some math. So I've got 21 pi equals two X pi. I cross multiplied. The pi's cancel out. So I've got 21 pi over two, sorry, 21 equals two X and then divide by two. X just equals 21 divided by two. We're just gonna leave it as a decimal or a fraction today. So and when I move this pi over seven over, it's gonna be 21 over two, which is about 10.5. So 10.5 pi. Same thing for nine pi over two, let's redo this, but not with three pi over two, we'll make it nine pi over two. X pi over seven. I've got two X pi equals 63 pi. My pi's cancel, so I get two X equals 63. And then again, I divide them 63 over two, which is approximately 31.5. So this becomes 31.5 pi over seven. Yuck, those are yucky, but I'm gonna get rid of the ones that I'm not gonna use. And then I just get to use the points I just made. It doesn't even matter what they're called. It just matters that we use them. I don't know why I have no marks there. So these are my marks. This is my little box. Box, 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 box. The only reason I find those is so I can put them in my box. And so I know exactly where my points are. So now I'm doing a sine graph that's flipped. Don't forget your flip, which means that I still am at the middle, 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 middle for my first middle and last point. But then instead of starting by going up, I'm gonna start by going down and I'm gonna end by going up. The hardest part there is just the fractions but you need to remember negative sign means that we start by going down. You need to know where the amplitude is and show me we go all the way up to two. And then you need to show me the period it stretches all the way out to not just six pi this time, but six pi plus pi over seven because we had to shift everything pi over seven. All right, one more. Well, I lied, there's a couple more on the next page, but one more on this page. Okay. All right, my amplitude is always a number out front. 
2 over 3. My period is affected by this 2 over 3. I'm going to do 2 pi divided by 2 over 3. Ooh, we already struggle with fractions. What's that going to be? 2 pi times 3 over 2. Well, my, I don't know if you can see that. It's, it's just my face. Okay. The 2s cancel, so I'm left with 3 pi. That's fine. A little ugly, but we can do that. And then this plus pi over six means that I'm moving left pi over six. So my new origin is going to be negative pi over six comma zero. All right, now our job is to make our box so we can label all of our points. Again, amplitude can be wherever you want, especially on a graph that I didn't tell you what marks. I'm gonna say two over three is here and negative two over three is here. Don't make it harder than it has to be. Same thing with three pi. I'm gonna make, let's say like this is three pi. You can make anything, you can make this three pi, but that's gonna get really frustrating when I have to put all the little marks in. So I'm gonna make this three pi, okay? Normally we go from zero to three pi, but again, we have to shift everything to the left um, pi over six. So I'm minusing pi over six from all of these points. So let's find out what my normal points would be. If I go from zero to three pi, the middle of that, the middle would be three pi, well, sorry, three pi over two. The middle of that in between zero and three pi over two, if I want the middle of one and a half. You can think of it as like three over two times one half which is gonna be three pi over four. Similar to the other way. Um, let's see, I'm not doing one half of that, I'm doing half in between those two. So if I, I'm trying to think of an easier way to do this than what I was gonna do. Essentially I'm going three pi over four, three pi over four, three pi over four, three pi over four. So what I think is probably easiest is doing three minus three pi over four, three minus three fourths. Three is the same thing as 12 over four. So if I minus three from that, it would be nine pi over four. I think that's the easiest way of doing that one. Okay, those are just our markers. Now we have to move everything to the left, pi over six. Minus pi over six. Minus pi over six, minus pi over six, minus pi over six, minus pi over six. When we minus pi over six, we um, can just find like denominators each time, minus pi over six. Um, I think that's probably the easiest way. Let's get to it. Um, so I've got four and six, that becomes 12 on the bottom, times three times three times two times two. 9 pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12 is 7 pi over 12. Okay, cool. I don't know what's happening there. Okay. 3 pi over 2, same idea. 3 pi over 2 minus pi over 6. Oh, well, 6 is a good common denominator, so I'll just multiply it by 3 here. So that gives me nine pi over six minus pi over six, which is going to be eight pi over six. And then nine pi over four minus pi over six is going to be if like denominator is 12 again times three times two, 
27 pi over 12 minus 2 pi over 12 is 25 pi over 12. And then last 3 pi minus pi over 6. 3 pi is the same thing as 16 pi over 6. So minus pi over 6 will be 17 pi over 6. The ones where it's a whole number is a lot easier. We just had ugly fractions here. So that's why we had to find like denominators. Um, tedious work is over. Let's put our barrier up and let's graph this. I'm gonna get rid of all the pink lines because we don't need them. We just want the blue ones. Mark, 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 mark. Erase all of those. And then before we get too crazy, make sure we know which trig function we're doing, we're doing cosine. And we're doing positive cosine, which means that we start high, we end high, our middle is the lowest point. Start high, end high, middle is the lowest point. And then in between that, we've got zero. The actual graphing is the easiest part. It's labeling your graph that's the hardest. Okay. We've got two that we're just writing the equation of, and then next we're going to find um, two more graphs with a horizontal and a vertical shift. So look at those in one second. So this one says write a sine and a cosine equation for these. Um, this one is a sine graph. This one's a cosine graph. You can always, sine and cosine are the same, but I'm not getting into that today. We're only gonna see this physically looks like a sine graph because it starts and it ends and its middle is all in the middle and then it goes high and then it goes low. So we're gonna use just sine here. I know it's a sine graph because my basic points. Now I'm gonna use the numbers on the graph to tell me what else I know about this, what else I can graph. Okay, so the next easy thing I think to identify is amplitude because it physically shows me how high I go. So it goes up to negative or to up to positive one fifth and it goes down to negative one fifth. So that means it's amplitude, it's A, it's number out front is one fifth. Okay, cool. The next easy thing I think is to do the horizontal or the vertical shift. There's no vertical shift because it's on the axis, but it does look like it's moved over to the right pi over six. So I'm gonna say X or you can say theta, whatever variable you wanna use. And I'm gonna say minus pi over six. Remember whatever's inside the parentheses is opposite of what we think. Okay. The next thing we have to do is figure out what the period is, how long it's taking us to get from here to here. Um, you can do this a couple ways. You could physically shift the graph back and see where it ends. Or we can just say, okay, however long it takes us to do a whole sine graph is one period. So if how long is it to go from five pi over six if I started at pi over six? So essentially we wanna find this distance. It's not straight five pi over six because I didn't start at zero. I started at pi over six. So to find this like range, I guess, we could do five pi over six minus pi over six. That's four pi over six, but that's ugly and not simplified. If I simplify that, divide by two from both of them, that's two pi over three. So the period is two pi over three. Now, the number that goes in the front does not include the two pi. That's what we call our B, if you remember back from our notes the other day. And in order to find a period, we essentially did two pi over B. In this case, my B, I didn't have to change anything, is just that three. So I'm gonna write three out front there. Again, I figured out what the period was, and then the period is always determined by two pi divided by something. In this case, it's two pi over three, which was really easy to see that my um, B, the number that goes behind sine and in front of theta is three. So Y equals one fifth sine three theta minus pi over six. Find amplitude, find your horizontal vertical shift. I think those are easiest and then do period, okay? We're gonna do the same idea on the next one. 
This is a cosine graph. Because it looks like a horseshoe. And I'm not sure. I think these points should be the same. It looks like it only goes as low as 6, 2. So we're going to not pretend like that's meant to be a guessing game. Amplitude, I'm going to say is 6 because it goes as high as 6 and it goes as low as negative 6. So we're going to say 6 cosine. I'm calling this a positive cosine, not a negative cosine, because it fits my normal cosine graph. It starts high, it ends high, and its middle is the lowest. It's not flipped, so there's no negative. So we can think of that as y equals. Does it look like we did a vertical or horizontal shift? Hmm. Hmm. My answer is, I don't think so. I think I can easily put a little box around it here where it covers all those points. Actually, I guess, I think it wants us to think that it goes all the way out here. Because it's labeled out there. That's fine, we can do that. So that means it's not, there is a horizontal shift we went um, left pi over nine. On a test or quiz, I'll make sure I'm really clear about it. For Because here I thought it was at the origin, but it looks like it truly does go all the way out there. So we'll do that, that's fine. It looks like my horizontal shift is going to be pi over nine. And since I went to the left, it's opposite of what I think. So it'll be plus pi over nine. And then to find my period, again, I just kind of do the range of how long it takes. So if I started at negative pi over 9 and I went to 15 pi over 9, I'm going to say 15 pi over 9 plus pi over 9. I'm not minusing this time because I went this entire length plus a little bit more. The other way, I went not the entire length. I had to minus off this bit right there. So it's not always plus, it's not always minus. You have to read your graph. You have to use your common sense. So that's like 16 pi over nine. And 16 and pi over nine doesn't simplify. That's it. However, that's not in the form we want it to be in. We know that period is gonna be two pi over B. So 16 pi over nine, how did I get there? Whoa, how did I get here? we're gonna to have to do a proportion. So I've got two pi over B equals 16 pi over nine. Simple, cross multiply, 18 pi equals 16 B pi. The pi's cancel. And then to get B by itself, we're gonna divide by 16. So 18 and 16 both have two, so it becomes nine over eight. That's fine, nine over eight. So that goes out front. All right. Okay, we got two more, two more full graphs. I've got everything written down. I don't really care about frequency. We're gonna skip that for today. If I decide I care, I'll tell you about it tomorrow. Um, we're gonna do period amplitude. The PS means period shift, which is I call a horizontal shift. And then the VS is a vertical shift. So we've got these two last ones and then I'm skipping this. I don't wanna do that today. So we're not doing that. Um, period is always affected by the number in front of the X. So I'm gonna do two pi over three. Oh, that's as simple as that one gets. My amplitude is the number out front. So that's two. And then I'm gonna write flip next to it to remind myself that it's a flipped sign graph, not a normal sign graph. The PS or the horizontal shift is going to be um, left pi over six. And then the VS or the vertical shift is going to be up one. We haven't done any vertical shifts yet. The only thing that makes that challenging is I'm no longer centered on the X axis. I'm centered somewhere else. We just have to be careful as we do that. These are all the things I would list normally. The only thing I would add is my new origin, which is going to be negative pi over six comma one. So that's like my new center of the graph. Okay, let's set ourselves up. 
by doing amplitude and period and my new shifts. So my new origin, let's do that first actually, and then we'll base everything else around it. So negative pi over six comma one. So we'll say this is negative pi over six and that's one. So this is my new origin. It's not necessarily a point. It might be a point. It's not necessarily a point, but that's my new focus of the graph. So from here, I need to do my amplitude and my period. So my amplitude is two. So I'm gonna go up two from everywhere here. I'll just keep it this color. One, two means that I go up to three. Down two means that I go down to negative one. Just gonna be right there. So if I do my little pitter patter graph, I can't go any farther left than this. And I can't go any higher than three. And I can't go any lower than negative one. I don't know how far over I'm going. It's wide open, so I gotta figure that out. It says that my period is two pi over three and I'm shifting everything pi over six units. So if I was at two pi over three, we'll say that that's all the way out here. Two pi over three. We gotta shift everything. <sighs> Before I do that, we gotta find all of our normal points. So if I was at like a normal graph, this would be That would normally be my, my box for this graph, but I gotta move everything over pi over six. If this is where I would normally be, let's find all my other points. The middle of two pi over three, half of two pi over three is going to be pi over three. Half of pi, two pi over three is just pi over three. You have to do half of those. half of pi over three is going to be pi over six. Oh, okay, at least we're gonna be all in the same family unit here in a second. So pi over six, pi over three, this will be um, three pi over six or pi over three plus pi over six. will be, oh, gotta get like denominators. That becomes two and two. That'll be three pi over six. Oh, and that's the same thing as one half. All of these are jumps of pi over six, pi over six, pi over six, pi over six. I know they're not necessarily to scale, but that's gonna be helpful in a second because as, as I move everything over, I don't have to relabel this graph. It's just gonna be all of these points just shifted over. My scale kind of sucks though, so we'll take that into consideration. Whoa. Move this guy over a little bit. No, it's just a sucky graph, that's okay. So those of you maybe not understanding, you're like, why is she, why is she freaking out about this? What's going on here is all of these jumps, that's pi over six, that's pi over six, that's pi over six, that's pi over six, that's pi over six. So I don't have to recalculate anything as I move it over one. So instead of ending at two pi over three, I'm just gonna end at pi over two and all of my jumps are gonna be in here. All of my pieces are going to be here. It's a sine graph, right? Yeah, sine negative, so that means it goes down. But since it's sine, it means that the middle line, I've got my first, my middle, and my last point. So my last point is going to be here in the middle. My first point is at my origin, because that's how sine works. And then the middle point is going to be in the middle. Pi over 6, 0, pi over 6, three, pi over 3, and then pi over 2. Instead of going up for sine, I'm going to go down for sine. And then instead of going um, down second, I go up second. Whoa. Yeah, this is not to scale, but I did, did what I could. I should have shifted this guy over a little bit more. What happens here? is that I didn't have to find any of my pieces. If you remember up here, I had to do all of my 
um, pieces. I did do like four pi minus something, three pi minus something, two pi minus something. On this one, I didn't have to do any of that because I already had all my pieces. Again, this graph isn't good because I should have moved over. It's bothering me. Let me move over just a little bit. We'll say pi over six is over here, negative pi over six. That looks slightly better. The hardest thing I think now is that we added the horizontal or the vertical shift. So we're not on the X axis. The X axis doesn't matter at all. We've got one more like that, okay? One more. And as you're watching this, if you're like, I have no idea what's happening, I'm here to help you, but I'm only available now on days one, three, and five before school or via Zoom in the evening. So you have to tell me if you need help. If not, you have to watch these videos and see if that helps you. Um, we are doing here period, amplitude, horizontal shift, and vertical shift. So period is gonna be dealt with the three. Let's do vertical shift is easy. This minus two means that we go down two. This one half, this amplitude, that's easy. My amplitude is just one half. That's fine. Ugly, but fine. Now this three on the inside, have you realized that none of our like coefficients have been on the inside? They've all been on the outside. So that means that we have a, another problem here. So I want it written as three X plus or minus something, not on the inside three X plus or minus something. I want it outside. So if I take that out, I need to take that into consideration. When I take that out, it makes it, okay, if I were to distribute it in and would have gotten pi, the number that goes here when I factor out that three, when I divided three X by three and I divide pi by three, I'm left with pi over three. The reason why is if I were to distribute it back in, if I were supposed to go, okay, three times X is three X, three times negative pi over three, well, the threes would cancel, I'd be left with negative pi. So we hadn't done that before. I set you up for success on all the other ones. This one is not. So I need us to take that three out in order to do anything. The period is still gonna be two pi over three. That's fine. That's cool. But my horizontal shift is going to be negative means that it goes opposite of what I think. So it's gonna to go to the right and it's gonna go pi over three units. Oh, this should be good with my values at least, pi over three, okay. Looking positively at this. The hard thing on this one, and there's been a hard thing each time I've added, we've added something new each time. The hard thing is you can't leave the three on the inside, you gotta take it out. Once I've done that, once you're okay with what I've done, let's go over my new origin is going to be positive pi over three comma negative two. So let's go find our new origin. Again, that may or may not be a point. It's gonna be the new center of my graph though. We'll say positive pi over three is here. And I'm gonna go down one, two. That's my new origin. Okay. Now we need to do our little above and below and left and right. So if my amplitude is one half, that means that I can only go one half above this middle and one half below. It's gonna be really tight since I had already put it. You can't just put your amplitude anywhere now. So I can only go one half up and then one half below, which would be like negative 2.5 and then negative 1.5 is essentially how high and how low I can go. I'm gonna use these little marks on my paper already to help me stay in there. And then this pi over three is marks the beginning of my graph. I think the period is the hardest part. So let's do that next. It says my normal period is two pi over three, which means that if I was like normally starting at zero, zero, I would go to two pi over three to finish my graph. However, I had to shift over one pi over three so that means I have to shift over one pi over three. If I was at two pi over three and I have to add one pi over three, 
that becomes three pi over three or just one pi. So this new mark is just one pi. And that's as far over as I can go. This is nice because I have my first and I have my last and I have my middle point here. The only new points I have to find are the in-between points. Um, and so if you think of like what, what's half of two pi over three, what's right in between them, we were just working with pi's over threes and pi's over six. So I know that this is gonna be a pi over six. That's another pi over six. This is another pi over six, that's another one. The easiest one for me is to go pi minus pi over six, which is going to be five pi over six. And then if I add pi over six to pi over three, that becomes two times two is gonna be, no shoot, did I do that right? Yep, three pi over six is gonna be one half. Sorry, I was tripping there for a second. Those pointers, points are not as important as long as you have the first and the last one. I do need to remember what graph I'm graphing. So I'm graphing a cosine graph, which means that I start high, I end high, and my middle is the lowest. Start high, end high, middle is the lowest. And then these in-between points that I just found have to be like the center of my graph where my x-axis would be if I was centered. So my cosine goes like this. Ooh slightly better. There we go. Okay. Okay. Those are a lot. Um, we did a lot of practice now, and now you've seen a few more and you can go back and watch these. Um, if I have time, I'll practice these um, in class, but we have to get through all of four or five before we do so. We're reviewing um, next, the other time I see you this week, and then Next week, we're looking at a test. So if you need any help, make sure that you get it, um, especially if chapter three test was not what you wanted it to be. Um, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys later. There's my stop.